Hey everybody, welcome to the Juniper Links Accounting Channel. My name is Caroline and today we're going to talk about what to do if you miss the self-assessment filing deadline. So the 2018-19 tax return is due by the 31st of January 2020. So you still got a little bit of time for that one. Um, but if you did happen to miss it, then I'm going to go through the steps you can take to minimize your fines and penalties from HMRC and hopefully get everything paid as soon as possible. So without further delay, let's get started with the video. Alright, we're in my computer and today we are doing a video on what if you miss the self-assessment deadline. Now, don't worry too much because we still got a little bit of time before the 2018-19 tax return is actually due. So let's get started here. So when is the deadline for your personal tax return, otherwise known as a self-assessment? So it's always going to be the 31st of January each year. And this 31st of January is always the following year after the ending April period. So for example, the 2018-19 tax return. This ends 5th of April 2019 and the deadline for that is the 31st of January 2020. So you've roughly got nine months to submit a return. If you are asked to make payments on account, there is a second deadline which is the 31st of July following the January deadline. So in this case it's 2020. So it's going to be the same year, but yeah, if it was a future return, then it would be 2021, 2022, whatever it is. But basically the payments on account, there will be one payment due with the normal deadline in January and there'll be second one due by July. So just keep that in mind. And that's only if your tax liability is over a thousand pounds for the year and HMRC will ask you to make prepayments towards the next year. Okay. How do I know if I need to submit a self-assessment? So HMRC has a tool to check if you need to complete a return, which is really useful. And it kind of goes through a bunch of things, a bunch of income options and choices that you can say yes or no to, and it'll tell you whether you need to submit a return or not. So this is like the easiest way to check if you need to do one. Um, otherwise, if you have untaxed income to declare in general, it's likely you'll need to file a return, such as if you have property income, if you are self-employed and you have trading income to declare, if you had a significant amount of dividends received during the year, things like that, then especially like foreign income and all sorts. So HMRC will want you to complete a return for those. And they will often send a notice to deliver a self-assessment tax return if you have previously registered. But don't rely on this notice to prompt you to submit one because they sometimes do not, but they were still expecting a return from you. And this can lead to all sorts of annoying problems later on. So if you know you've got income to declare and you registered for self-assessment, then it's likely you will need to complete a self-assessment. So do that before the, before the deadline because <laughs> There's no point waiting till January to submit your self-assessment. For example, if you submit it in May or June or even July, whenever it may be. <laughs> if you do it then, you still don't need to actually pay the liability until January or the 31st of January, the year following. So you still have plenty of time to pay, but at least then you know what to pay and how much you need to save before then. Because you leave it till January, everything's due at the end of the month and you're just gonna be rushed for everything and it's not, it's not smart. Okay, so examples of some income that may need to be declared. So there's self-employed income, otherwise known as a sole trader, and you earn more than a thousand pounds for the year. If you're a partner in a business, then you will need to complete a self-assessment. Uh, money from renting out property, tips and commissions. So you get like extra payments for things, uh, income from savings, investments and dividends. This does not include ISAs. So do not add your ISA interest from that. <laughs> Don't add that into your return. And also cash back on your cards. So for example, if you've got a credit card which has cash back on it and you basically get a percentage of all your purchases back in like as a refund onto the card, that is not considered income. Instead, that's considered a refund. Of course, foreign income if you had any. And there is also something called a high income child benefit charge. So if you receive over £50,000 of income and you're receiving child benefit from the government, they will want you to repay some of the money back depending on how far over this 50k you've gone during the year. So remember, if you are a higher rate taxpayer, then you will likely need to complete a self-assessment as well. So are there any penalties if you did not file a return or if you did not pay your self-assessment bill on time? So yes, there are penalties, unfortunately. <laughs> um, the first one is £100, where your tax return is up to three months late. 
So after the deadline of 31st of January, you've got basically three months and only this £100 will apply in that. Obviously, your actual payment will have interest on it. And there's also a daily penalty charge up to £900 as like a maximum figure. And in addition to that, a further £300 penalty will be issued after six months and another £300 penalty will be issued after 12 months. So you're looking at quite a high penalty there if you never submit a tax return, which is not ideal and I don't recommend doing this. Uh, and I will go into some options you've got later on in the video. <laughs> so can I appeal a penalty? You can appeal a penalty, yes. Uh, but there are certain restrictions on actually appealing these penalties and HMRC will want you to have a reasonable excuse in order for them to consider your appeal. So what they consider reasonable are things that are quite severe and out of outside of your control. So things like, I relied on my accountant to submit my tax return but they did not do it for me, would not be acceptable in HMRC's eyes. And they'll just be like, why don't you just do it yourself then in that case? Why don't you find another accountant, blah, blah, blah. So you can appeal online for these from 2015, 16 tax year onwards. Otherwise you'll need to write in to actually appeal the penalty. And if you just do a quick Google search on this stuff, you'll find the forms and everything that you need. So some reasonable excuse examples here are a death or a serious illness of a close relative, partner, or of course yourself. Your computer or software failed just before or while you were preparing your online return, causing you to not be able to submit it properly or there are service issues with HMRC online services. This one I'd be careful of um, because HMRC will try to be like, there were no problems at that time, I don't know what you're talking about. So definitely if it does happen to you, take screenshots and possibly video evidence, just document it as much as you can so you have the proof that there was a problem. Um, otherwise HMRC will just be like, our system showed it was fine, you, you're, you don't know what you're on about. Kind of thing okay <laughs> so another one's theft or natural disaster preventing you from filing return postal delays that you could not have predicted but obviously most people do it online so this one's kind of like iffy delays related to a disability you have so anything like that and you've got the evidence for it then sure thing try to appeal the penalty i mean worst case they're just going to say no so what should i do now uh, definitely check if you need to file a return first because this will determine what you need to do in the next steps. If you do not need to file a self-assessment based on that link that I had earlier where you can check whether you need to submit a return or not, definitely contact HMRC either online or by phone. Since we're nearing the deadline now and it is for the last tax year, I recommend calling them because that's going to be the quickest way and you can use this number here for the self-assessment helpline. If you do require a self-assessment, then definitely aim to submit it as soon as possible to avoid further penalties and interest charges that they will put because it's just not worth it. You're, you're paying money for nothing, basically. So get all your records together as soon as possible and just submit it because you're just going to have a much easier time that way. And what do you need? So this is all the things you're going to need to actually submit your self-assessment tax return. So preferably you'd have a government gateway account. Uh, you can do paper tax returns, but I wouldn't advise it. It's slow and can get lost and all sorts of weird problems. So I just create a government gateway account if you don't have one. And you will need your self-assessment UTR number as well. You can ask HMRC if you've lost it. So the number on the previous page, you can also call them about and be like, hey, I've lost my UTR, can I get another one? <laughs> um, in some cases, they can give it to you on the phone, but in a lot of cases, they'll want to post it to you. Since it's nearing the deadline, they might be able to give it to you on the phone. You will just might need to call back and probably get someone else if they're just refusing. You'll need all your income details during the tax year. So anything you've earned, literally everything, even if it's been taxed already, because you're going to enter the actual income you received and the tax that was deducted on that income when you're completing the self-assessment. So you're not going to get double taxed on anything, don't worry. So if you are employed, a P60 will have all the necessary information for you. These are given to you by all employers at the end of the tax year. Um, if you left an employment, then you'll have a P45 instead, and it'll actually tell you what tax year the P60 is for. So just make sure you check what the end date is on that P60. So if it's saying up to April 2018, 
that's actually the 1718 tax here and that's quite old now so <laughs> you want to look at the one ending 2019 <clears throat> and same for the p45 make sure the employment ends within the 2018 19 tax year so that's going to be any time between the 6th of april 2018 to the 5th of april 2019 so if your employment ended within that date range and it says the employment ended within that date range, then you will need to enter the P45 information onto your self-assessment. Your bank will also be able to provide you with an interest statement for the tax year. And you can often find these online in your online banking account. Um, it depends which bank you've got, obviously, but in most cases they'll have a statement showing all of the interest you earned during the year because people will need to enter this into their self-assessment quite regularly and they understand that <laughs> and issue you with these income statements and dividend vouchers will of course show any dividends you have received during the year in the case of foreign dividend income and all that sort of stuff they may already be tax deducted by the country issuing the dividends in these cases uh, what you'll need to do is speak to a financial advisor or a tax advisor that specializes with whichever country you've received the foreign dividend income from and possibly get a rebate from that country. Okay, what if I can't pay on time? So if you can't pay your self-assessment li liability on time, let's say you completed your return and everything and it was done before the deadline but you just didn't have the money to pay it at that time because it was a surprisingly large bill and you weren't expecting it. So in this case, you definitely want to contact HMRC as soon as possible because they can help you set up a payment plan and they could be less strict and a little bit more lenient with you in terms of penalties. Obviously interest will still be charged on these uh, late payments but only on the remaining outstanding amount so when you do make the payments and reduce the liability then the interest will also be reduced. So you can do this online in some cases depending on how it's been set up. So if you owe £10,000 or less, if you have no other tax debts, and you have no other HMRC payment plans set up already. So as long as those things are all good, then you can use their online service to actually apply for the installments and set up a payment plan. It's just this URL here and it'll walk you through setting that up. Otherwise, you'll just need to call HMRC. They have a specific like unable to pay my tax helpline type thing. It's for everyone, not just businesses. You can do a quick Google search, it's really easy and it'll show up there. So that's pretty much the steps that are recommended to take if you missed the filing deadline for self-assessment or if you're very, very near to submitting it late, then <laughs> at least get the return submitted as soon as possible because that's gonna have the most penalties on it and then work out the payment in any way you can. Hopefully you can just pay it on time and if you cannot, then contact HMRC before it's late. Don't wait till after it's passed because then they'll get all funny and be like, well, why didn't you tell us before, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I simply recommend completing these things much sooner. So tax year ends every April on the 6th, sorry, the 6th of April, the new tax year starts. So from the 6th of April, you can literally start getting all your income details together and ready to submit them with a self-assessment. Obviously, I know this requires some like motivation because it can be quite boring to do this <laughs> but if you get it all done well in advance submit everything that you need to submit and then you know the deadline and you know how much you need to pay then you have plenty of time to prepare for what's happening in January when your actual payment is due so just set up like five reminders on your phone or something I don't know set an alarm clock who cares but just set a reminder to make the payment from your personal account to HMRC before the deadline if you can otherwise yeah contact them to ask for a installment plan to help you make the payments so thanks <laughs> thanks so much for watching to the end of the video guys i hope you found it useful uh, if you do have any questions you can leave them in the comment section down below please do consider hitting that like button if you did find this video helpful thanks again for watching and i hope you guys have an awesome day